Okay. So I guess everyone else will come in and start doing their things. So um, well, they're kind of busy in discussion, but feel free to do what you want. I guess I'll just listen to the conversation and see what's happening. Um, well, as you're, I'm not going to act out the whole conversation because that would be silly. Um, but if I was just going to be sitting there, Aww. no, I'm not. No, that's just no. Um, their main focus is on the protests and the riots. Um, and there's, but it seems like there's been some on other worlds too. Um, and they're trying to figure out how to deal with that so that um, basically the independent wing won't feel pressured um, to side with the anti-Jedi coalition. But they can't really figure out how to do that. That's what I was going to ask. What are they proposing to do about that? <laughs> yeah, they're not, they're not exactly sure what to do about it. And um, Oren kind of seems, he's younger, he's probably like 35-ish, so he's fairly young for a senator. Um, but um, he keeps going back to trying to find, basically trying to like show the public who the protesters are, like that they're not good people, basically, to try and turn public support against them. That's, it, that's his solution. Do we think that the protest and rioters' claims against the Jedi are completely unfounded? Who are, we, who are you asking that? Just everyone in general? Mm hmm. Or I'll just look at you and be like, it's not even a matter of whether or not what they're saying, what their complaints are. It's what they they want from it. That's the, really the problem. Some of the protesters and rioters want the Jedi put on trial, essentially. And even if you agree that the Jedi have overstepped their bounds in some areas, which I don't, by the way, uh, that's taking it way too far. And the public, all they hear is the Jedi overstepping their bounds. They don't hear what the protesters are trying to propose for it. And I give credit to the to the leaders of the Anti-Jedi Coalition for not caving to them yet. But I fear that if the Oversight Committee is passed soon, it will turn into something like a witch hunt. I, I, I understand that but at the same time I don't think any non-governmental organization should have the powers of government so something should probably be done about that if the Jedi want those sort of powers and the government wants them to have those sort of powers so I think maybe there is some compromise that can be made and I think their leaders, at least, at least the person we met with, seems amenable to being reasonable. And Moro will start talking. Well, yes, he is reasonable, and that's one of the reasons he has so much sway in the Senate. Um, but he also has to listen to other people in the group. And if he can't, if he falls out of favor with them, he might be replaced with someone who's worse. But. Well, frankly, unless the Jedi come to terms with something, I'm not going to agree to anything. So, 
the problem is that what they're saying isn't completely unfounded and it has grains of truth in it. That's what makes their argument so persuasive and potentially dangerous. We can't just ignore them altogether. We need to address their fears and concerns that are valid and do something about it rather than ignoring the entire issue. But we need to make sure we do it in a way that makes clear that some of what's happening is utterly false and incorrect. You can't just blame the Jedi for the war crimes committed by the Sith. Clearly, any rational being understands that you can't blame one group of people for the actions of other people in said group. I think the best way to go about this might be to seem reasonable and amenable to something getting done, but avoid something like an oversight committee that could be abused. So are you addressing more the senators or more the two Jedi that are standing in the room or just everyone in general? Me, everyone in general. Shailu? Yeah, pretty much everybody. I guess I'd look at the senators to see what their reactions are. I, I'm i I'm trying paying attention to the Jedi to, that are in the room to try and you know gauge what, what their reaction to this stance is. But other than that, I mean... Yeah, sorry, I got distracted. What did you say? What did you say, Fikas? I said I'm sort of looking a bit at the Jedi to get an idea of their stance on the things that have been said and how they're reacting to it. Yeah, what are the Jedi doing? I haven't really seen or heard anything much from them. I don't have anything to say. I'm kind of too con just overwhelmed and generally concerned. I don't. I don't know how to deal with this situation. Seeing that, well, the newcomers are kind of looking towards the Jedi. Um, Senator Murar will turn to her Jedi companions. Do well, you think the Jedi would have a meeting with them to discuss this? Because if the Jedi are behind something, most members of our uh, coalition will be as well. And that might solve all of our problems. John, you're the ranking Jedi here. Was he talking to me? Uh, she was talking to both Jedi. I don't know. You'll have to direct that question to the council. Well, if you could ask them for us, that might speed things along. We have to go meet in the Senate, um, but then we might be able to convene and find that out. Okay, you wanted to ask them what? Well, if they sit down and have a meeting with the opposition party, basically. Fine. And uh, Bella Hardin kind of comes over to the table and like, well, the session's about to start. You should really get going. And then the senators kind of nod to everybody, like, well, Orange is like, well, wish us luck. Kind of gives an eye roll. And then they kind of start heading out of the room. Slaughter, slaughter about the herders. 
Eh? Don't worry about it. At this point, uh, Lexa will come and she'll come up to uh, the governor. Uh, are we supposed to go with them? Uh, no, I mean, they kind of wanted you to ask the Jedi Council thing. I mean, they're in the Senate and you're kind of supposed to be helping with negotiations and kind of keeping your safe, but like they're in the Senate building, so nothing's really going to happen to them. Mm. Uh-huh, that sounds likely. Uh-huh. <laughs> Explosions! Death! Everyone in the Senate is dead now. There's no senators. The building just blew away. We're dead too. Governor. Yes? How dead set are you on getting the Republic's money? It's not just about the money. It's about well, recognition, support, defense, everything else. But if there were other options, would you be open to them? Well, I'm not sure if the rest of the former citizens of Telos will come if that's the case. If it's not directly recognized in the Senate. I look at Aelan and I look at all the rest of them. Come on. Let's, let's cut all the polit- political talk. Do you honestly think that the Republic wants to support you, given the current state of things? You're currently being used as a tool, pretty much, to uh, figure out this whole Jedi bill, so... They don't care about Nuth and I or any of the people that we know. They really don't care. They want to use us in this political game as a pawn, as a chess piece, as a, or a sabak uh, piece, and... Uh, We'll do whatever they can to get their way. I think you have that backwards. I think we're using them. They, What power do we have to convince anyone? Well, aside from Shiloh here making the news yesterday, we didn't bring anything to the table in terms of negotiating power. No, but we are intermediators. Or intermediaries. We can go to other people freely, and it won't raise suspicions. It seems to or me this whole... Bad seems to me this all I've heard talk about is this Jedi bill and very little about Telos. Now, Thela, now look, normally I don't care about these things. I've lived on Coruscant for the last three years. It's been my home. But with my family living there now, it seems like it might become another home. I would rather that we move ourselves so that we are standing on our own two feet than relying on a couple of senators who seem more keen on making sure the precious Jedi, no offense, are still here to protect them, when, in truth, there's no room for them to do both. We, you, they need the Jedi to fight the war, and they also need them to maintain stability. Now, we're caught in the middle of this. We can either sit here and continue to help them do the things that they want and hope and pray that they come and help us afterwards, as an afterthought, perhaps, or... There are other options. We could go to other people and make ourselves more of a... more of a bargainer, more of a negotiator at the table with a little bit more in our hands. Not that I'm saying we shouldn't consider other options. I'd also like to point out that the Republic is nothing more than an alliance of planets that share a common interest. And certainly the other planets in the Republic have a vested interest in supporting the recolonization efforts on Thela, not just because it's the right thing to do, but also because Thela is now a planet of the Republic, just as the citizens of Telos were, and any of the other planets in the Republic certainly would wish to receive aid from the others should their planet be destroyed by the Sith. So certainly they'll be able to help out a planet in need, recognizing that they themselves could find themselves in a similar position any day now. We also need to have a little bit more patience. Telos was destroyed by the Sith over six months ago, and we've only been here for a single day. Then what would you say to the planets that were destroyed years ago by the Mandalorians? Look at the news, Shayalu. Those planets barely get any support now. The most of them are forgotten, because now we've got Revan on the loose, and that's more important. Do you honestly think Thela will do any better than they did? 
That's what we're here to guarantee. But there's no guarantee. We have to look out for our own interests and we can't rely on the goodwill of our of our government. Which means we should hedge our bets just in case we don't get as much as we need. Or anything. That and you have to consider that Nuthanai uh, Nuth needs help now. And bureaucratic debate and such can take years. Not to mention the fact, as I just said, Mandalorian Wars hurt a lot of people. There are a lot of refugees still looking for a home. If you make Vila appeal to those people, well, you wouldn't even need the Republic's money. Money would just come funneling in from those who can afford to get here and then need to work. It would start, it would bring whatever supplies we would. You'd be able to, you'd have the people and resources to start actually using what's on the planet, the natural resources. And then if there's enough people and enough people take an eye to us, you could talk to some of these uh, individuals that Aelin's managed to find and get more support. That you have the... We could turn Thela into a planet like Onderon and Alderan and all of these other places that are, are legitimate powerhouses in the Republic. Well, I did preface my statement by saying I'm not saying we shouldn't consider other alternatives, but we shouldn't just give up on the Republic. Those planets you mentioned are planets in the Republic, therefore it's important to be able to count on them and make sure that we're still counted among them, even if we do look at other options. But if the refugees who would flee to Thela have enough money to support its construction, then they wouldn't really need to come to see if they're refugees. They could, if they had that much money, they could make a living anywhere. It's not about the individual; it's about the pool. The more people we can gather, the more, the, just the more people. The re the thing that's keeping us from growing right now is a lack of resources that we can't seem to acquire. But if we get enough people who, you know, one person here has a ship that works, another person here knows how to make door steel out of rock. All I'm, I'm not saying that we just give up on the Republic and give up on coming in, but I am saying we don't put as much effort into it. Just, we've done our part. The Senators have asked us to talk to people. We've talked to people. Let them do their thing. Let them decide. But I don't think we should work any more into this effort. I think we should keep our ears open and be willing to do what we need to if they need further assistance. I think right now we should focus on help, helping ourselves. I agree. It would also probably be better to leave the Jedi matters to the Jedi. From what I can tell, looking at the two Jedi in the room, they don't seem to be really keen on defending themselves in this situation. Or seem to care about this potential bill. It looks like we're missing a Jedi. Or are we? I'm not, I still haven't learned the character icons. <laughs> no, we've got them. Yeah, it looks like we've okay. got them. Yeah, this, as far as I know, everybody's there. Okay. It's still not stuck in my head which one's is John's new character. So <laughs> it's, it's the Zabrak, who's directly below you. Okie dokie. I look at Kalani and Eaton, and do you two care? You said nothing, you've done nothing. Does the Jedi even care, or are they busy with other things? This is not my area of expertise, you know. I don't know what to do about it. I already said that's a question for them. Well, if you two are any example, then it seems like they are preoccupied with other things. And, and that's the case. We're working for a bill that the Jedi don't even seem to have on their radar. Helping people that don't even want it. My interest in this isn't primarily in the Jedi. Although the people of the Tia do immensely respect the Jedi, 
my interest is in the fact that Coruscant and several other planets of the Republic are being thrown into even more chaos than this war has already thrown them into, because they're acting out of acting out in pure fear of the Sith, and they're trying to take it out on the Jedi. And something needs to be done about that in order to rebuild the morale of these planets if the Republic is to survive this war. Well, then my advice would be to run for office. You seem to be on a great track for that already. As someone who only cares about the people in this room, and by that I mean the individuals who live on Thela, I say we take care of our own problems, and we tell the Republic to have fun with theirs. That seems a bit more like cutting ties. I think we should be a bit more diplomatic about that. We should well, help if there's anything it's obvious we can help with in in this, but until until there's any need for any of our particular skills in this matter, I don't I think we should focus on whatever looking for things in the ways that we are good at. You do what you want. The governor is the one who makes the decisions. It's her people. But I don't see how my skills are being utilized. I don't know anything about politics. I am... I'm just a bounty hunter. I'm used to looking out for myself. I'm trying to broaden my horizons, but uh, all, so far all I've seen is that we talk and nothing gets done, or we wait and still nothing gets done. I mean, I'm in the same boat as you. I'm not a politician and I have no idea what to do with any of this. I'm just here because I was asked to be here and money. I mean, yes, the money helps. Cover of my soul kind of look at all of you. Well, it sounds like you just want to bring everybody from everywhere to Thani, but I'm not sure um, the colonists will go for that. I think there was a hope that we could preserve Telos as Telos, I guess, on the planet. And I'd have to honestly confer back with them because I don't wish to speak unilaterally for them. But pursuing leads wouldn't be a bad idea. Riesel chime in. Well, I know I was hoping to form a working relationship with the Jedi, and if we kind of isolate ourselves out from that and let the Jedi be shackled, it hinders that. Look at each other. You two could not be more different. You come from two different backgrounds. One of you has worked for the Republic and is now a freelance mercenary, now trying to lead a couple of people survive and the other one used to be a sith you your planet is a testament that you don't need the republic to function you you, you are refugees both and you've managed to make a home what makes you think other people in this galaxy couldn't do the same thing oh, we... that said another argument could be made that half of telos is already not or half of Tila is already not of telos but I would have to talk with everybody, and while I wouldn't necessarily say that we've made it on our own, we came with supplies from Telos, but we were cut off. We had very little resources, and now that we've reconnected with the Republic, trade has opened up again, but it's all with Republic worlds, some of whom may not continue to trade so willingly if we openly aren't recognized by the Senate. But like I don't I said, think anyone's saying anything about not being recognized by the Senate. Was simply saying, don't ask them for money. I still don't think. Well, if you want to, f if you can find other places to get money that is workable and doesn't come with strings attached, and I'm all for that. And then Reese chimes in. But my point is, we need the Jedi to be able to operate so that we can operate with them to help run operations against the Sith. That's why I'm here. And look at both of the Jedi. The 
And I would say that's a question you should be asking the Jedi directly instead of going through these mouthpieces who only seem to be interested in bills and keeping order for Coruscant. But if an oversight bill gets passed, then the Jedi may not be free to work with us anyway. The Senate might overstep its bounds and prohibit contact. An oversight bill, as far as I can tell, will only affect Coruscant. And to be honest, I find it quite funny that they think that this is going to help when they're, most of the Jedi are off on the front lines at the current time. So, I mean, I, we don't see very many of them here. This is this, They're just trying to hedge their bets and have a, a sort of cleanup for after the war, so that when it's all over, they can blame the Jedi. But that's not going to, it's not going to affect problems now. And who knows, maybe if you make some headway there, you'll give the Jedi a place to be. All I'm saying is that's a problem you can't be worried about right now. Right now, Thela needs money. Thela needs resources. That's what we need to focus on. My head hurts. <laughs> well, I think that's really all there is to be said at this point. We should just start looking into things now. Right, well, if there's no other further objections, Eiland, you have that list handy? Yes, I have it right here. Uh, it's on this uh, terminal. Right. Let's go through that. Let's see if we can't find someone who's a little bit more movable than the Athorians. Ah, oh, that sounds good. That sounds like a good idea. I think I will join you. All right, Reese, Becca, we should probably have one of you along with us so that you can interview and meet these people. You're the as you are the ones who are going to be making the deals with them. Wait, sorry, what? I was distracted. Both Reese and Becca probably should be there so that they can negotiate. Well, I mean, we could just look into things and make contact. Negotiations don't have to happen just yet. We can yeah. set that up when, when they have time, as I'm pretty sure they both... At the very least, Becca still wants to be involved with the Jedi Bill. That's fine, but... We should have one of them at least go through this list with us. Reese, what do you think? Becca, do you think it would be okay to have Reese join in on that? I imagine you're a bit more familiar with the Senate and all. Well, there's not really anything we can do while this bill's being proposed, other than try and help out where we can, but while they're in session, there's not much to do. So we're free to go through any lists you may have. Right, then let's get started, since, as you've said, there is nothing else to do. Eiland, if you would. All right, here we go. Let's see here. There's the um, 
them guys and then oh. <laughs> and the others other things and yeah so we look through the list with them and try to talk with them and, and see which ones they seem the most like they would be willing you know like going through their po statement policies and all of those things to see if which ones might be the most uh, amenable and uh, good for both sides yeah Oh goodness, I really need a list of this stuff. That's all right. It's my fault, Kyler. I'm sorry. I had to throw that wrench into your do your monkey work. Yeah, it's the ground. And and Kyrath is distracting me now too. <laughs> um then while we're going through it, uh I'll look at I'll uh start talking to the Jedi and just saying uh like so Any thoughts? Any reasonings? You have both been awfully quiet. You seem to be unable to speak outside of your council. Is there any personal opinions on what's going on? You are determined to get me to RP this shenanigans. Yes. Political stuff. Hence Guys, the name I'm, of the game we're playing. I'm trying to give our GM a chance to do the thing that we gave him a wrench to do. <laughs> Best way to do that is for us to talk amongst each other. No, it's to have a fight with each other, actually. Because combat takes way longer than combat. <laughs> you still have to pay attention to that. <laughs> Politics. Politics are enough of a pain in real life. Can you guys fight with each other and then I'll heal you guys? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, spar between you two and then we'll have Shailu heal whoever does, or whoever gets damaged. That way it's an ongoing spar. So it just kind of continues to stare at them and it's like it, I just I guess I don't understand if it were my people I would be fighting tooth and nail but you were both quite silent and seem to be just ready to do whatever you're told I don't know what to do So, have we ever known what to do? What do you feel? What, what do you want to do? I, I can't go out and convince all these people that, that, that they're wrong about the Jedi. How, how am I supposed to do that? Well, to start would be to speak. Also, convince the reasonable people and not the unreasonable people. That's a start. Your friend is awfully silent. I don't think I've heard him say more than two words. My mission here is very specific. The Jedi Council sent me here 
to facilitate negotiations between the new Thela representatives and the senator from Telos and maintain security. How do you facilitate negotiations when you don't open your mouth at any opportunity? If your job is to facilitate the negotiations, i.e. make them possible, then I think helping with this bill so that they can be possible would probably be a good idea. I don't know what those senators believe. They seem to be on your side, but as an outsider, it seems like you could care less whether this bill passes, and you're just content to let them fight for something that they're not even sure the Jedi supports them in doing. Do you, do you have any suggestions on what we, we can do? Yeah, I don't, I don't know what you want me to say. Anything. Talk to a Jedi if you have to. I don't know. Tell them they're wrong. I've said more than anyone here, and I have the least stake in this. I've said half as much, and I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> For once in a long time, he and I agree, and that says something. What does your council think about this whole thing of uh, oversight and such? Hello. Yeah, they are not exactly thrilled with any of what's happening. Um, they don't want the Senate because they, they see the Senate as fairly corrupt so they don't really want any oversight from them um, but with so many of them busy on the front lines they've been kind of distracted by other things Well, then, if that's how they feel, then perhaps you should bring it before them and let them know that uh, the Senate really wants to pass this bill, or at least some of the senators do, and if they don't do anything, it could lead to some oversight on, uh, over them. They should at least have someone with authority in negotiation involved in this. Also, one good way to avoid oversight is just to make very clear that they don't want any powers beyond that of ordinary citizens. So, um, yes, but a public declaration like that would do nothing. Everyone would still treat them as Jedi. The, the crux of this is it will do nothing for the larger galaxy. It is just them trying to placate the Coruscanti in Upper City, because in the Under City no one cares. I guess I just don't understand why the home of the Jedi that's everyone can see as soon as they come in has nothing to say. They have not sent anyone to the Senate, and they send two guards who clearly don't have enough information to actually make any decision. Well, to be fair, we're talking with a very specific group. We, I mean... Then again, they haven't said anything about whether they know if the council has sent anyone to deal with this at all anyways. I mean, we were just sent here to deal with Telos. Did you see a Jedi walk with those senators to the, to the meeting? No, but I mean, why would they 
be here with us or those senators specifically there are lots of other senators there may be a response that we just don't know about I don't know it just seems like if you care about something you'll do everything you can to make it happen oh I'm not saying that the Jedi currently in the room don't seem to be very interested. I think that's a separate matter of what the, their leadership is doing versus what they themselves are doing. Well, Senator Gurr mentioned that there were protests and riots happening on planets other than just Coruscant. Would someone be interested in helping me look through the holonet to find out what those other planets are and how serious the issue is? Alright. Cough, someone who's good with computers, cough. <laughs> sorry, they're all busy looking at this list. I'm, I don't know what to tell you. You're just not going to find anything. I'm sorry. <laughs> Akaz just suddenly starts whistling and looking at, walks over to Elon and looks at the list. <laughs> Yeah, that's about all I've got is I'm waiting for either the list to come through or something of that nature. Since it's located Cases. on this terminal, I could go to another one and look up if you want, but... I, I could do it. Sure, Lou, if you need my help, I will offer it to you. Thank you, Alexa. Scarlet. Scarlet. She smiles as she comes over and helps you. Why did I have to make a Jedi? <laughs> uh. Nothing wrong with making a Jedi. It just comes with the attached, you know, context of a Jedi. Yeah, I don't think I thought that through properly. You saw Laser Sword and you were like, yes. Pretty much. Alright, so Kyler, what do we need to do? Um, so you were looking for... Um, half, of a, half of us are going through the list, and then the other half are going through the holonet to find other supporters. Or other planets where there's been riots and stuff. Um, I mean, there's been like small protests on a lot of places. Um, the biggest riots are actually happening on Corellia right now. But they're not like super gigantic or anything. And you've got some people in there that kind of are the typical Corellian isolationist people who don't really want that much to do with the Republic at all anyway. But it's kind of like a smattering of that kind of stuff. But it's like not any worse than like a riot over anything else, like an increase in the cost of hyperdrive fuel or a monopoly by such and such company that provides toothpaste or whatever. I mean, riots <laughs> don't really happen that frequently. So it's not like, it's not like just like we're waving. So it's sign. very unlike America. Right. I mean, there are a lot of. Pro I wouldn't. I mean, yes, there are riots. But anyway, 
but no, that's recent. Then, but yeah, it's more yeah, it's like the recent frequency of riots is more like what you're seeing now than as opposed but like scattered around different places. But there's not like a bunch of riots for other things also happening. <laughs> Uh, well, so, like, if there are other situations where there have been riots and they eventually just, like, die out, like, so if nothing is done about these riots, they'll just eventually lose steam and blow over. Or are they, like, gaining ground? Um... Give me a knowledge bureaucracy roll. Oh, this is the greatest roll ever. <laughs> Just spam this roll, no thing. Okay, wouldn't it be more like social science, even though it doesn't really matter to me since my bonuses are the same in those. <laughs> um, I don't know. They, they kind of seem like they've kind of sprung up fairly re like the more violent stuff has sprung up kind of recently and it's not like they haven't gotten less frequent they've just they've kind of gotten more frequent so it seems like it's gaining steam rather than losing it but you can't exactly tell Yeah, I know what we should do while uh, Kylar is busy. Let's just take our break now. Well, no, I've got, I've, 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 I've got a couple of things. So yeah, I, I put a handout in the people's handout thing. So um, kind of found two that seem like they wouldn't be too crazy potentially. Um, there's a trade conglomerate called Albacorp and an agricultural group called Styline Agricultural. Um, yeah. Can you write those somewhere? Oh, they're in a handout. Oh, thank you. Interested in exports from our planet or from other planets or well, out of theirs? In general, they they're looking to like kind of make a deal to like help handle exports of like agricultural stuff. It's like they have a distribution network for and like methods of transporting things. So they're always looking for new people to kind of be their suppliers, basically. So that's what you've got. Okay, cool. And I mean, they had other corporations on the list, but Becca kind of nixed to them because she didn't really like what they were. Okay, so I can think of one. These are the ones that she likes. Okay. These are the ones that she has the least objections to. The okay. trade stops the best idea to me. Agricultural stuff can come later when the colony is more established. True, but uh, I think we should probably speak to both. Otherwise, this course of action is to talk to both. Oh, yes. All I'm saying is we don't have much to offer in terms of exports. Well, 
Not yet, but oh, if yes, they give us enough support, yet. there's a, plenty of fertile land. That is quite true. The only thing there would be, we'd probably have to agree to a building up our agricultural um, forces to a certain degree. Which wouldn't be a bad thing if we want the planet to grow. Yes, it would be quite inviting to refugees looking for work. Yep, that it would be. Especially considering there's a whole planet's worth of land available, and that could probably be sold on the cheap, and money could be raised from that as well. How do the spirits feel about a potential growth of Thela to be a planet such as Telos? As far as I'm aware, don't leave their stuff alone and they're fine. That should be stressed. Leave their stuff alone. Well, that shouldn't be hard. There are plenty of planets that have quarantine areas and places that they know are dangerous. And anyone who was foolish enough to go near them, well... You know, the spirits have a way of dealing with them. That said, it might do well to also make some further negotiations with them, just to be clear that, as far as the village is concerned, the, the city of the dead is off limits. Obviously. All right, uh, Governor Loveless, when would you like to get in touch with these particular organizations? Yeah, if you want to make initial contact, let me know what they have to say. I'll stay here, try and work the senators. All right. So it looks like we have at least some direction. Uh, all right, uh, I'll see if I can't send uh, each of these a email, I guess. Okay. See if we can't set up a time for a meeting and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Just to talk things over. If you want to write something, that'd be great. We should also take a break while you write that. If you want to take a break, we can. Yeah, let's take a break here. So we have yeah. an opportunity to write things and make Kalani's head hurt less. Uh. <laughs> To be fair, like, I didn't expect the first night and this morning to take so much time. And I apologize for everyone who is extremely bored by this, but I also appreciate the people who are doing a lot of things I never expected, so... Anyway. All right. Step one, find the rail. Step two, turn steering wheel really hard and fall off. <laughs> no, I mean, you haven't even gotten to the rails, man. It's like you, you're at the train station and then you're like, man, this train's taking a while to get here. Ooh, that's a that's car over the there. Next train station. <laughs> <laughs> Return ticket. Get alternative ticket by jumping into the back <laughs> of a moving train. <laughs> or no, let's go, let's go jury rig this train and make, give it some steering and we'll just take it off roading. <laughs> 
Uh, Who needs rest? And 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 I'm I'm trying to to translate some of my more real world thoughts on politics into this, but it's hard because.